Now, one of the most requested characters that I've been told to cover is none other than Michael Schofield. Now, if you're not familiar with him, he is the mastermind behind pretty much everything that happens in the show of Prison Break. And while it does go without saying that Michael isn't perfect, and he does have some natural genetic advantages, there is, however, a simple three-step process that Michael uses that you can use and implement into your life to make a huge impact. First off, one of Michael's best traits is that he is able to remain calm in the face of incredible pressure. Which second is the biggest driving factor that allows him to outsmart just about everyone So let's go straight into what you can learn from him when it comes to staying cool in high pressure situations. And then how you can use this process to come out ahead in business and life. Michael's calm and non-reactive demeanor is extremely unsettling to his enemies as he doesn't let his enemy get inside of his head too much. But what's even more important is the way he is able to execute this calm mindset by using the simple three-step process that we are discussing in this video. So make sure you stick around for it as this piece is essential. Now, Michael wasn't born with having a lot of mental agility. As none of us are, he developed this way of thinking from his studies of structural engineering, a degree that is very heavy in technical analysis which he first used to complete the designs of buildings and then to break his brother out of prison, which then led him to break out of another prison and then to break out of another prison, while simultaneously still being able to outstrategize his enemies. The same principle applies in our lives if we want to remain calm in certain situations. The most reliable way isn't by just improvising. In fact, improvisation is not even necessarily a good thing. It means that somewhere down the line, something went wrong. And there is no other prepared solution. You just have no choice but to just deal with the situation right then and there. The more you rely on improvisation, the more likely you are going to have to improvise as you'll be less prepared going into situations. The way to tackle this is just by thinking about the situation. Essentially, sitting yourself down and analyzing the difficult situation that you have to face. So if you know you're gonna be facing a difficult situation, finding a quiet place and sitting down to think is a very powerful technique for you to calm your mind and let it find a solution to your problems. Now, the ability to outsmart people requires much more than just by being simply calm. And Michael is put in many different types of situations where he often has to outsmart and outmaneuver a bigger power at work. But what he does is exhibit a three-step powerful process that regularly allows him to give him peace of mind while he's at the biggest principle that the process is built on is by planning all the way to the end when us human beings face a difficult situation our natural response is to just make a vague plan of action and hope for the best however in doing so we are putting ourselves on a very weak bridge A bridge that at any time can collapse at the sign of something unexpected. From something even as simple as a small gust of wind. Putting ourselves at huge risk. Planning all the way to the end is a careful, thoughtful approach to attacking any given situation. As it allows you to take into account all the possible consequences, obstacles and twists of fortune that can occur. And from there, it is much easier to tackle the situation even when something unpredictable happens. When we look back at season one of Prison Break, 
The amount of things that went wrong was unbelievable. An example of this is when Michael gets burnt and he realizes that part of the map that was on his tattoos has gone too. Now, in normal circumstances, a person may just think that it's game over. But for Michael, it never is over. He went on to devise a whole plan to get into the psych ward in order to get Haywire to remember the map of the prison, hence resolving the problem. It starts in the basement. Okay. This line leads from a hatch in the call room to this pipe system here, and that runs to the infirmary. That's how we'll get out. I just need to get out of psych ward to set things up. But three days after I'm gone, I'll come back up through the basement and get you out. You're just telling me what I want to no, hear. No, not. I need you to let me get us out of here. I need you to trust me. Interestingly, by using this approach, he even makes it seem to his opposition that something in his plan went wrong. When in reality, that was the plan all along, leaving behind a red herring, which leaves his enemies outsmarted and confused. The best minds in the world designed this security system and you almost beat it. Frustration must be killing you. You blew it. Actually, there's only one missing piece of the puzzle. And you just brought it to me. I'm not sure what you're talking about. Your Scylla card. Now. In your life, you're probably not going to be breaking out of much prisons. But if you do, make sure you leave a thumbs up and leave a comment below on how you got on after watching this video. But to go back to the point, the power of planning all the way to the end is underrated in today's society. Most men are ruled by the heart and not by the head. Their plans are vague and when they meet obstacles, they improvise. But improvisation will only bring you as far as the next crisis and is never a substitute for thinking several steps ahead and planning to the end. We can see this when Michael breaks out of Fox River in season one. Out of the whole Fox River gang, Michael and maybe John Abruzzi and Teabag were the only ones that understood that escaping wasn't just about getting over the prison wall. The real challenge began once they were outside the walls. Michael knew that him and Lincoln had to disappear to another country, so he set in motion a chain of events that would allow him to get there. That's why Michael built a relationship with Charles Westmoreland, who Michael worked out to be D.B. Cooper before he even went into Fox River, knowing that he could promise him to join the escape in exchange for a cut of the $5 million that DB had stashed away. Mr. Westmoreland. Hey, Michael. And this is the part where I extend a formal invitation. Because you still think I'm DB Cooper. I don't think. I know. The reason why majority of all the other inmates ended up getting killed or arrested again is because they didn't plan deeply and see things through to the very end. All they saw was just getting over the prison wall and that was it. Well, maybe except Haywire, as Haywire is just Haywire. It's fair to say that Michael does have some natural and genetic advantages of being a genius. But that is something that we can't change about our lives. But what we can change is our ability to think. According to the ancient Greeks, the gods were thought to have complete vision of the future. They saw everything to come, right down to the intricate details. Man, on the other hand, 
were seen as victims of fate, trapped in the moment and their emotions, unable to see beyond immediate dangers. Those heroes such as Odysseus, who were able to see beyond the present and plan several steps ahead, appeared to defy fate and were perceived to be on the same levels as gods, in their ability to determine the future. That's why Michael is seen to have such godlike power, as he simply just thinks the furthest ahead. And this ability to plan several steps ahead and strategize puts him up in the top tier of TV show characters, alongside people such as the professor from Money Heist. This deep level of thinking and planning is what contributes to his such calm demeanor. I mean, I wish I could say it was something a lot more fancy, but in reality, this is it. The ending is everything. It is the end of the action that determines who gets the goal. Your conclusion of your plan must be crystal clear and you must keep it constantly in your mind while anticipating the many possible crises that will tempt you to improvise. The reason why Michael Schofield was always able to outmaneuver and outsmart all of his enemies is because he always planned to the end and always kept on course through every crisis. When you're several steps ahead and plan your moves all the way to the end, you will no longer be tempted by emotion or by the desire to improvise. And even when Michael does have to improvise, as no plan can ever be perfect, he still will be working out some sort of clear, solid plan of action in his mind. Your clarity of knowing what you want and how you're going to get it will rid you of the anxiety and vagueness that are the primary reasons why so many people fail to conclude their actions successfully. That's what makes Michael so calm in high pressure situations, as he is always seen as the man with the plan. So the simple three step process in order to think like Michael Schofield follows as step one. When facing a difficult situation, you must take the time out to create a detailed plan that focuses with the end in mind. Step two, you must include alternatives and flexibility in your plan. Because if you're locked into a plan too rigidly, you'll be unable to deal with sudden shifts of fortune. Once you have examined the future possibilities and decided your target, you must build in alternatives and be open to new routes towards your goal and be willing to adapt to it. But remember, more is lost through a vague plan and improvisation than from over planning and rigidity. And then finally, we have step three. Go out and execute. I mean, it's all good and nice to create a solid plan, but if you're just going to sit at home and choke the chicken all day, <laughs> then nothing is going to get done. It would have been all good for Michael to come up with this elaborate plan, but if he never executed on any of them, then it wouldn't have any real value. And if you're seeming to struggle to get things done or are looking for strategies and more concepts that will help improve your life or business, then make sure you subscribe and check out the Golden Knowledge channel as we do some of the best character breakdowns on the whole of YouTube. And if you've watched all the way to the end, I just want to say thank you very much and I'm glad you stayed through listening to my Brummy accent. <laughs> and I hope you was able to obtain some sort of value from this breakdown. Comment below what your favourite thing about Michael is and what character would you like to see next. Thanks for watching.